Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. I am so sorry we're late. I misjudged my time window and I had a, I had a hankering for fish tacos. And I thought I had time to go get my fish tacos. And it turns out we're 20 minutes late, so I'm sorry. But I got my fish tacos. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're coming up on Labor Day weekend, so that's good. We've got a, a good holiday weekend coming up, and which means we've got some sales for you guys. And, uh, and I'm going to be working traditionally today, so I'm over at the other desk. And um, I've got we we did some um, some great bird photography uh, down at Na Nat uh, Nature Encounters down in Central Florida. And once again, I got some great harpy eagle uh, imagery that Dustin shot. It was really beautiful uh, photos. And I got this uh, photo here. Do you want to go to the down shooter, Dustin? Uh, yes, right there. Right there. Yep. So I got this great photo that Dustin shot that I want to. I want to try to emulate that, and I also got these these new uh, sepia pens. So I want to try mixing my sepia pens, my black ink, and my white ink, and see if we can come up with something here. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. And um, and like I said, we have a Labor Day weekend sale going on. And uh, let me get this tape off. There we go. We got a Labor Day weekend sale going on. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the things is you can buy, and I got to read this because I, I got it all, Nick's got it all written out for me. We buy either, uh, you can buy either my character design course or my acting for animation course, and you can get the other one for just 15 bucks. So that's a really good, uh, that's a really good sale right there. Um, and then this is also, this is the last chance to get my digital painting in Photoshop for $1 at creatureartteacher.com. So, um, if you guys have uh, or heard about, for those of you that have gotten my, my digital painting in Photoshop, um, you know it's pretty full. And so for those of you that have not gotten it yet, that course is available for $1 and it's this weekend, is, it's, it's going back to normal price. Sorry, I dropped my eraser. It's going back to normal price after this weekend. So uh, I would, if I were you, I'd grab it. Just grab it. Even if you don't think you're going to use it right away, go grab it. You can put it in your in your archives because it's only a buck <laughs> it's less than a pack of gum what's that <laughs> the archives archives the archives <laughs> archives and also my four-legged bundle is just fifteen dollars this weekend so if you are uh interested in wondering how or uh, uh in understanding how to animate four-legged bundle bundle on that and so we got a good uh sale going on at creatureartteacher.com uh, speaking of which, also next weekend, I'm going to be uh, uh, at Lightbox virtually. Um, uh, if you guys know the Lightbox uh, uh, conference in Pasadena, California, um, has gone online this year because of COVID. And so a lot of people are doing a lot of uh, different things from their homes. Um, and so I'm going to be doing lectures every day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of next week. Uh, Friday, I think I'm talking about four-legged animation. Uh, one of them, no, maybe it's the second day. Anyway, the topics that I'm going to be talking about are uh, designing animal characters, design, uh, animal character design, um, my uh, animal locomotion, which is the second day, and then the third day, I believe, I'm doing uh, uh, how to create realistic textures when you're doing your character renders uh, in, in, uh, digitally. So. A little bit of photo bashing, some lighting techniques, that sort of thing. So we're going to be getting into that. Uh, but anyway, that's that. I uh, also want to say um, this past August we announced our scholarship, uh, uh, a $5,000 scholarship that we're going to be giving away at the end of each month. And so August we, had, we got uh, almost 200 portfolios submitted. And so now over the next week or two, Nick and I... Uh, we'll be going through and picking our top uh, winner, and we'll be announcing that in the next couple of weeks. So I'm excited about that, and uh, uh, and also Tony Cipriano's course on ZBrush is doing really well, and everything's good. Everything's coming up roses. So oh, and before I get started, I want to show you. You guys know that I've been working on this Birds of Prey course, and as a supplemental to myself, because whenever I do these courses. I bring to it some knowledge, but I also want to make sure I'm, I'm giving you more knowledge than I've actually got. So one of the things I love about creating these animal drawing courses is that I 
What? Oh, they're, they're singing the down shooter. Okay, well, you can switch <laughs> the camera to me if, I, if you see me talking to the camera, right? right. There you go. There you go. And so one of the things is, um, now you made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> um, That's my job. Uh, is when I, when I start these courses, I do a lot of study ahead of time. I bring, I bring it to it my, my knowledge I'd already have, but then I also do a, a, probably a month or two of study before I get started, just to, I, w I just want to make it as full as possible. And this is a book that I recently received in the mail on bird anatomy for artists. And I'm always getting different uh, questions about what kind of books should you get for this or that. And uh, this is bird anatomy for artists by N Dr. Natalia, Nat, uh, Nat, Natalia, Natalia Balo. Okay, and um, it's awesome. It's really, really good, uh, and I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, there we go. Um, it's it is so thorough, and she is a great, great artist. And so um, it's got everything really you need to know: bone structure, uh, uh, musculature, feather layouts, everything. So if you are interested in uh, drawing birds, and uh, if you plan on getting my course on how to draw birds of prey, this would be a perfect supplemental book for that, okay? So Bird Anatomy for Artists by Na Natalia Balo. 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 So Balo. It's, it's awesome. Very, very, very good book. So I just want to give her a plug and I got it through uh, Butio Books, I think it's called. It's over on the left side there, Dustin. There's a little handout oh, right there, right next to the Gatorade. Yeah, right there. This is the company that sent the book, Butio, Butio Books. Butio uh, describes uh, these are uh, Butios are are soaring hawks. So it's uh, it's all ornith ornithological books and stuff. So it's kind of neat. Anyway, for those that are interested. All right, let's dive in. I'm going to have questions up here on the screen in front. I'm going to. So I want to lay in just real quickly. Um, this I've got this harpy eagle. And rather than just diving right in with ink, I usually do that, actually. I think I want to. Uh, start with a little bit of pencil and just get it a little more accurate. Have you guys got a Discord? A Discord? What's that? Uh, it's the uh, chat, the chatting app that I showed you uh, a little while back. Oh, no. Um, yeah, the, the company does not, but I have my own personal one. But that's about it. Oh, the company meaning us? Yeah, you guys. Teacher? Here I'm just one of the cool things about birds of prey is their binocular vision. And what I mean by binocular vision is they look forward and have overlapping overlapping vision, and so the their brain, just like with us, we have overlapping vision. Our brain takes the two slightly skewed views that we have coming from each eye, and they interpret the final image and create depth. That's how we see depth by looking through those two slightly skewed images that we see from our from our uh, two viewpoints with our two eyes. And so, as a result, you see I'm drawing the eye slightly turned forward. <coughs> Harpy eagles are some one of the biggest eagles in the world behind the Philippine eagle. They're just massively huge. And we had the pleasure of meeting one down at Natural Encounters in Lake Wales, Florida. Oh, Nick posted a link to the bird book. That's awesome.
Yeah, one thing I'll tell you, and I'll just I'll just straight up admit it. I did a video. I did my first video on raptor feet, and thought I knew what I was talking about. I I had studied. I even had the skeleton in front of me and did some studying, and then I got the book and I read I read the book, and I realized that much of the information that I put into the video on raptor feet, from a, a bone structural standpoint, was wrong. So Dustin and I went and redid it. With the correct information and uh, so there you go we aim to please and we aim to give you accurate information <laughs> this is a bit off topic but what is the breed of that dog skull uh, dog sculpture you have above besides the beside the skull on your desk if it is a breed of any dog yet at all I don't know it looks like it could be a Doberman it looks like it could be this could be a wolf for all I know it could be a wolf with everything stripped away actually that might be a wolf with everything stripped away possibly yeah mm -hmm. any tips for quote-unquote standing out with your artwork still trying to find my art vibe you know, it, you just do it. You, you stand out by being consistent. Um, and in this day and age, you know, having social media presence obviously is, is huge. And so I try to have, I learned that when I left the studio world, I started talking to people that were younger than me and I was asking them the same question. You know, how do I, how do I stand out? How do I get people to know who I am? And they said, well, YouTube and and you ever heard of this thing called Instagram? And yeah, I'd heard of it, but I really didn't know much about it, you know. And so, uh, I, you know, compared to the old days when I was painting in galleries, and you know, back in the late '80s and early '90s, you know, there was no such thing as social media, and we had to do it the old-fashioned way, and and uh, you know, mail out announcements and do art shows and things like that, whereas. Now you don't have to really do that as much. You know, there's social, you know, we, we sell and we do shows virtually, you know, which I think is super cool. And Gabby and Erica are here and they're saying hi. Hey, how's it going, Gabby and Erica? Twitch Gabby, question. Gabby, hey, Gabby Aaron. I made it this time. What's that? <laughs> Gabby said, I made it this time. Yes. <laughs> I'm working traditionally today. Hey, hey, Aaron, can you tell me about the tools you're using today? Yes. I'm using a US Gold number two pencil. <laughs> Just a regular old number two pencil. Uh, the paper I'm drawing on, I'm glad you asked that because I, I always forget to do this. Uh, this. This is my favorite drawing paper. So this is Strathmore toned gray, uh, nine by 12 inch pads. I order these by, I, I order like 10 pads at a time. Uh, it's toned paper, it's not white, it's gray. And so I can I can work light over over the gray, which is really nice. It gives it gives it a lot of depth. Um, right now I'm just working and uh, laying in my pencil work, um, and then I'll be using uh, in uh, these archival ink sepia pens to lay down the midtones or the dark to midtones, and then I've got my Bitmoji brush pen right here. And I'll be using that to put in my darks. And then I've got a couple of grays. And I've just got, you know, i got some Copic markers here. And I've just got a whole bunch of different things. And then, to finish off with my light highlights, I've got a Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll. There it is. Jelly Roll uh, .08 uh, pen. And that'll give us the, the highlights that I'm looking for. And uh, Erica earlier was asking about the uh, that dog sculpture. Uh, is that a 3D total model or June model? Uh, I think this is a June model. Yeah, I think this is June. I can't remember. I bought it. Um, broke the ear. You can see I broke the ear. I bought it uh, uh, at CTN a few years ago. I think. That's where I got it. Pretty, pretty darn accurate. It's pretty beautiful. Same guy that did the lion one. Here's just the head for the lion. 
there's a musculature right there and then with the skin pretty amazing I've got the whole body over there good morning Aaron and Dustin good, good afternoon good uh, will you sometimes still do the Tuesday live streams no <laughs> we are done with Tuesday live streams unfortunately at least for a while I find with the Tuesday live streams and Friday live streams, I um, I have a very hard time getting enough other stuff done during the week. We have, you know, I've, I owe our uh, our Patreon members uh, uh, an exclusive live stream that we've fallen behind on there, so I want to get back over to that. And um, and you know, my Birds of Prey course. Granted, it's it's a big course, but it's taken me four months to make this thing, and and part of the reason is we've been doing two live streams in the middle of the week, and it's it's hard to get back, it's hard to, to get back into your groove, um, especially after you do a morning live stream, to go and then record five or six hours of drawing on top of that. It's just it's mentally exhausting. Sir, was it a problem for you drawing with your left hand at any level? No. I, I can't. See, that's what I say about you drawing with your right hand. I can't understand how anyone draws with their right hand. I've always drawn left. I've always been left-handed. So this is a massive bird. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Uh, this weekend, if oh, this weekend, if you use promo code Labor Day 2020, that's Labor Day 2020 at checkout, you can take an extra 10% off any order, including my brother Travis's animating and calipeg course. Okay, which is out now. I really recommend that too. If you are interested in animating, and uh, and you have an iPad, the calipeg course is for you. It's really cool. And my brother. Who is also an animator? We worked at Disney together for years. Um, he uh, he got together with the folks that made Calipeg, and uh, and kind of beta tested for them as they developed and became an expert with this software. All right, so I've kind of got it roughed in. This one's just going to be a, a sketch. Oop, wrong pen. Wrong pen! Wrong pen. Alright. When I start, I don't like to start with the eye, because that's the most important area that I want you to look. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. Might get a little bit of rocking. There. My head gets in the way. Let me know, Dustin. You know the oh. shadows. I, there's a lot of shadow in there, but that's about as much as I can fill it. So the first, the first pass is going to be done with. this uh, sepia pen and then I'll go in with darker pens later. The, uh, the fan? The fan. Yeah, try turning off the fan. Hold on one second. See if that helps. 
Did that help? Hopefully. Because if it doesn't help, I'm turning that fan back on. Got better for a second, then got better again. Somebody wrote. Weird. Um. Let me try just muting, like muting and unmuting again. There we go. And yeah, it didn't change anything. So you can turn the fan back on. Nick says fan noise. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Whoop, whoop. It was making a whoop, whoop. <laughs> slowly work my way through here. Still problems? Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna try to get to plug directly. It's all the way back in here. Down 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 got that I'm using sepia which is brown and uh, harpies are kind of a blue gray so the color is not going to be totally accurate I really felt like getting some detail in today Dustin sounds like a bad cable maybe adjust the position of the cables that's what he just Okay, you just did that, didn't you? Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, oh, I think I fixed it. Oh, good. I just had to, the good old unplugging and plugging back in routine. Let me turn my fan and, back on. Oh, wait, what? Somebody says off noise, somebody says then the noise is back. Well, it's definitely oh. not my fan, I know that. Yeah. Gabby's saying that is a, like a rapid tick, tick, tick sound. I don't know what's going on. I think the mic just might be going bad, but let me. I'm just gonna keep on drawing. You keep on drawing, but you're not gonna be able to hear you for a second here. I'm gonna try moving the cord into a new port. Nick says it's gone now. It's gone away. Oh, I pay the devil to return it. It's so gone. It's, yeah, so it seems it's working now. It was better for a moment because it was unplugged and nobody could. It was. <laughs> they thought it was. They, they thought we just like, weren't oh, talking. It's, it's gone now, but they're muted. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was working. So, 
Yeah, I think we're just going to have to either live with it or just Oh, is it still not working? It. Yeah, I think it's still not working. Sorry, folks. We'll fix it after today. I think it's I don't one know, of those is things it, where just every once in a while it just doesn't want to work. Are you listening to it online? Can you hear it? Uh, let me check. Super distracting. Here we go. It almost sounds like a um, what? What do they call that thing that detects uh, radiation? Ge a Geiger? Oh yeah. I think. Geiger counter. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad now. So. Sorry, folks. We'll fix it between now and the next time. And if anything, I think just the Discord needs a, re a restart. So what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm getting my dark Anything darker than mid-tone, I'm getting it laid in. And then I'm going to go in with my real darks and really define. Ooh, I love that pen. That's not the uh, big pen you usually use, right? No. This is a brand new pen. I've never used these pens before, so I'm just testing them out. I don't know if I'm going to like them or not. The jury's still out. I'm doing a little bit of hatching in here, trying to create value with just lines. My friend Ronnie Williford has come out with a, uh, is coming out we're just going through the proofing of it right now. A brand new course on an introduction to drawing. So if you're brand new to drawing, this course is going to be perfect for you. And it's great for younger audience members, younger kids and that sort of thing that have never really drawn before. And uh, one of the things he covers in the course is hatching. Drawing with ink and then hatching your, your values in. It's going to be a neat course, I think. Methinks. I wonder. Methinks. I want to see something real quick. Just while I'm at it. I wonder if this is... Whoops, that's not going to work. I wonder what happens if I... Touch it with a marker. Is it going to bleed? No. I'm going to try mixing my my cool grays with my sepias and see what happens. It doesn't run, so that's cool. Where'd you get the uh, sepia pens from? Uh, I can't remember. I think I ordered them through Dick Blick. Gabby's asking, Aaron, uh, what reference pick are you using? Did Dustin take it? Yes, Dustin took it. It's a, uh, I showed it earlier, but you must have missed it. I've got it taped up in front of me. It's a Harpy Eagle. I'll show you real quick. This Harpy Eagle and Dustin photograph. I just love the, the way the feathers are laying, and I just wanted to try to emulate that. 
<laughs> Nick says, it's fine. Quit messing with it. It's fine. Quit messing with it. <laughs> I, think, I think just because he's saying it's fine, don't mess with it. I think I'll, I think I'll just say it's not fine. I'll keep messing with it. That's why you're it. messing with it? Yeah. <laughs> When will the Birds of Prey course come out? How's the editing going, Dustin? I should have the editing done, hopefully, by the end of next week. Yeah. Well, at least I hope so. I hope so. Is it raining? No. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Though we have been getting quite a bit of rain for, for the past few months. Oh, yeah. And we're having a big housewarming party this weekend. Nick and Steve are coming up. And a big storm is going to roll through tomorrow. No, really? <laughs> Did you look that no. up? I don't, I don't. Why are you being just purposely negative? I'm cracking a joke. Though we do have a storm coming our way right now. <laughs> yeah. Why are you being negative, man? Yeah, see. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. We're going to get stormed on before the end of the, the stream today. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a big one there, bud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Might want to grab all the beer you got and take it down to the basement. So yeah, this is kind of interesting mixing these sepias with. I'm not sure if, I'm, if it works or not, but it's kind of cool. So it'll finally come out next week. No, it won't. The version prayer won't come out next week. Like my end of the work will be over uh, next week. We will still have some uh, uh, opening credits to to create, to insert, and uh, and. They still need to be proof seen and all that jazz, so. Yeah, once we make the course, we have to watch the entire course. And this course is going to be long. It's really big. Yeah. Whoops. Messed that up. Dang it. Yeah, that'll lighten up. All right, back to sepia. I'm gonna stop tickling. Gabby's asking, have you ever drawn your your fam? Evelyn has crazy orange hair. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing a painting of her pretty soon, I think. So what I'm trying to do here is just establish of a light and dark pattern. The sepia is obviously only mid midway dark. It's not it's not gonna be the darkest dark in here. But it does help me to use it to establish where everything's gonna go. Twitch question. Hey, are any plans for you or Travis to release a beginner's course to drawing? No, we got one from coming from Ronnie Williford. I will be doing some drawing courses down the road. But Ronnie Williford is the one coming out with one soon. Very soon. I think my next course is going to be putting personality into your walks in animation. So many people I've I've found they get they get hung up on uh, just the mechanics of a walk, someone walking, that they they have a hard time getting the personality in because they're so focused on just getting the mechanics to work. And I want to show you how to do it without getting caught up in all the all the mechanical stuff. Kind of work it all out together, all at the same time. So, Aaron, what kind of new chair do you get? 
I don't know yet. I haven't picked. Probably going to get an Arthur Miller, just splurge. Alien chair, whatever they're called. Nick said, oh, are they, are they water safe? Yes, Nick. These are water, or at least the marker. I could put marker over them, but marker is alcohol based. I'm not sure if they're water safe. I might throw some watercolor on it. We can see. Let me bring this down a little bit. I'm very inspired lately by my friend Pichalis Dugalis, and I know I'm not saying his name right. Um, I only know him through Facebook, but we've communicated quite a bit, and we've traded artwork. It's P-A-S-C-H-A-L-I-S-D-U-G-A-L-I-S. -I, -I, I believe that's, I think I said that right off the top of my head. Uh, he's an incredible, incredible bird artist, animal artist, I should say. Natural history artist. He's just an incredible artist in general because his portraiture is amazing too. And so I've just been looking at a lot of his work and his pen work and, and uh, he inspired me to buy some sepia pens and just try this out. Uh, will you be doing a live stream next week, or will it be canceled? Uh, it's going to be canceled, yeah, because Friday um, I'm going to be doing it for a light box. Thank you for reminding me. That was on our list to tell people today, and I completely forgot. If you mess up coloring a sketch, do you throw it out or salvage it somehow? It depends on how messed up it is. Usually I'll just start over. I don't want to have to make it look like I was really kind of... It'll look like it was trying to be salvaged, you know? So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this like a little piece at a time so you guys can see how it'll progress. So I've got my little black brush pen. Just diving right in with the pupil. What's the name of the what's the brand name of the of those sepia pens? They are Art and Fly, fine line drawing pen. Art and fly. Art and fly. Then an art and fly. There we go. A YouTube question. Aaron, for digital, should I buy an iPad Pro or Cintiq 16? I'm a beginner. Uh, to digital. I would buy the iPad. Um, I love uh, Wacom, obviously. Uh, but the iPad, if you could get both, I would get both. But if you could, um, uh, but if you're only getting one, get the iPad because obviously you can take it with you. It's much more portable than, an I, than a uh, Cintiq 16. Just hitting the little areas here to make them a little uh, 
Uh, do you have any suggestions for fresh pans? Ones I use, I've, uh, or have used, have had terrible nibs. Or I used them badly. I, the Copic, I think, are still the best. I'm going to start putting it. I want to balance out my everything here. Actually, how used up is this? I need to order a bulk of uh, these Faber Castell pit pens as well. Hey, Aaron, do you like Copic markers more or watercolor? I like watercolor more. I just I'm not very good with Copic markers. I use them. I use mainly grays. I can't, I don't know how to do it in color. I'm terrible with Copic markers in color. It's fun just to do these little sketches like this and get this value range in here, you know? And what I'm doing now, because I can't get this to go completely opaque, so I'm just kind of creating an artistic pattern by just going different cross hatching. You know, it just creates this interesting texture in the background. Aaron, when I practice painting, I find a lot of my uh, time out in the field is spent trying to color to color match. I don't like using vivid bright greens. They look too cartoonish. Any tips? I use a simple palette. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, mixing green in the field and getting green to look right is one of the hardest things to learn. It's really difficult. But remember that you're painting, no one's going to be standing over your shoulder comparing it to what's in front of you. When you bring it home, no one has seen that except for you. And so it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. Do what's right for the painting. Do you guys remember the name of the eagle you photographed? No, I can't remember her name. I wish I could. Oh, that's right. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Nick, uh, my my uh, live stream is not canceled. I know, I brain farted on that one. Uh-oh. Uh, no, the live stream is not canceled. We're just going to simulcast it with with uh, Lightbox. I was being an idiot. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. We already talked about that. See, this is why my brain doesn't work. Yeah, Nick's probably thinking right now. Dang it, Aaron. pull out on this just a little bit just a touch so you can see it a little better YouTube questions Aaron have you been to the Oscars before yes I was nominated for best animated feature or our movie was and uh, I went to the Oscars in 2004 
or 2000, yeah, 2004, in February 2004. And a great night. It was a lot of fun. So what time will the next live stream be? Same time. One o'clock, Eastern Time. All right, let's see here. Let's go to my next darkest. I want black. Wish I had slightly darker. Slightly darker, eh? Slightly darker. Slightly darker paint. Have you done an oil pastel live stream before? Would you want to do one someday? No, I don't know how to use oil pastels. I've never used them. I'd like to learn. I would go to one. I would go to a live stream where someone's using oil pastels so I could learn. Fo show. Fo show. Fo show. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Have you ever thought of including the American Kestrel Falcon in your Bird of Prey course? Thought about it, didn't do it. <laughs> I thought about it, but I already had a Peregrine and a Jir Falcon, and I had to hit a lot of other Birds of Prey. And uh, so I just didn't make the cut, unfortunately. I wanted a Philippine Eagle in there as well, but that didn't make the cut. And being left-handed, do you ever find the side of your hand getting covered in ink and such? I find it happens to me a lot, especially working left to right. Yeah, so I get very conscious about which way I work. Just wondering, is it yeah. called purple or violet? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And here, it just needs little touches here and there. For this light to work. Are you going to feature bearded vultures in your Birds of Prey course? They're nope. my favorite birds. Yeah, I think you. this is the same person that asked last week. No bearded vultures in this one. No, I've got, I've covered 15 different Birds of Prey. And um, I did cover Andy and Condors from the scavenger section. What's the secret behind realistic ink and pen drawings without flattening it and making it less cartoony? Thanks. Well, it's really about getting the, uh, paying attention to your values. Making sure, and value, in this case, when I'm talking about value, it's not the worth of something. It's the lightness or the darkness of something. If something has a dark value, it's dark, right? So you, whenever we refer to value, when we're talking about art, we're talking about or at least in the production of making art, we're talking about its lightness or its darkness. Our house burned down three weeks ago and I and I lost almost all of my paintings. Ever since I've uh, been in an art slump, or ever since then I've been in an art slump, uh, what do you do when you look at a blank canvas but you just can't seem to find your creative mojo? I just force myself, start with the drawing. You know, first of all, I'm sorry about losing your home. When I was uh, 17, our house burnt down in a forest fire as well, and I lost, I lost all of my artwork. We didn't have any insurance. We were homeless for a while. And, um, uh, but do know that over time it'll come back and you'll find your mojo again. Matter of fact, we're going to be doing uh, a little video at some point from 
the very place that my house burnt down. We lived way out in the boonies near the Everglades. And uh, Nick and I have been talking about it. We've talked about doing doing something from there. And that just reminded me. There we go. We're just doing a little sketch here. I'm hearing the pour now. Yeah, it's starting to rain. Here comes the rain. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here comes the rain. And I say, say I'm so soaked. <laughs> YouTube question. I only get hand cramping from painting, not drawing. Am I holding my brushes wrong or something? You might be squeezing them a little hard. Really got to squeeze tight. Sometimes people will squeeze their brushes hard. No, no joke. I've seen people do it. No joke, man. That means it's not a lie. Just lightly, just getting little details in here. I'm going to go back to my emoji pen and just put in some little textural details. Hey Aaron, can you share any experiences from your art school? Well, I mean, art school is art school. I went to the Ringling College of Art and Design back when it was affordable. I can't see spending $47,000 a year for it, I'll tell you that. But I went and uh, had a great time. I lived on campus my first year. I never partied. I worked hard at school. I've really focused on, you know, getting the work done. I did go to the beach whenever I could to go surfing. So I would I would skip class for that every once in a while. But other than that, and uh I mean it was it was great I mean Ringling one thing I do have to you know thank Ringling for or many things is is the fact that that's where Disney was recruiting from when I got my job with Disney so Disney happened to come to our school and I put in my portfolio and had I not been going to that school I wouldn't have got in and had the career that I had. Have you ever found an old piece of work and felt the concept behind the work still had up, held up, but wanted to remake it, uh, so to speak, with the new skills that you learned since then? Oh hell yeah, absolutely. I hope I that right, thanks. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, there's been so many times in in high school where I would draw, draw out uh, like a certain type of spaceship and a couple of months later I'll learn like a new technique or something and I'll go back to that same ship and just redraw it. Oh yeah, that's I mean that's, lots of artists do that, yeah. absolutely. darker on this beak. Did, 
Did you write the story of Sno uh, for Snoker? Uh, Nick and I did. Yep, Nick and I wrote the story for Snow Bear. It was a two-man job. Well, we got the concept, and then we, we pulled together some friends. We pulled together Ronnie Williford and Lyndon Ruddy, and we really hashed out the story then. We got really detailed with it, but the original concept was Nick Birch and myself. Lyndon Ruddy. There. Creating... Just trying to create a little bit of texture. Well, that rain's coming down now, baby. Oh, yeah. So just slowly working it. And often what I'll do is I'll go over if I feel like something was too light. I can go over it with the pen and just darken it up a little bit, get it to sit a little better. This butter looks like it would use some voice recognition technology. Oh, jeez. In the left in Scotland. Well, I haven't done it in a while, all right. <laughs> no, but I think this one is more of remember the lee of the stone. I think it even has a say, that similar kind of posture. That's why I kind of <laughs> went towards that one instead. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to draw, let him concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> there's no such thing as concentration or drawing. Wait, there's drawing. There's no bowl. That one. Getting a little texture in there. Get, get a little, little, little texture. Yes. Texture. Is being a writer useful for a career as an animator? Yes. And I don't mean for screenplays exclusively. No, being an a, a writer, I think for a, any kind of entertainment job I think is is useful because you you understand character you understand structure you understand storytelling all of the different things that go into it <laughs> what's the software you're using have you saved <laughs> it's a program called uh, real life is this real life and it auto saves every uh, millisecond that's right. <laughs> Although the problem is there's no deletion or there's no Alt Z, so once it's put put down, then it then it stays. <laughs> Who is your favorite art YouTuber? Proko. Uh, I miss Proko. <laughs> Hi, Aaron. The live-action Mulan film is now available for purchase on Disney. What was your fondest memory working on the uh, the OG animated feature? My fondest memory. Well, I I animated the ancestors and I animated Yao, and uh, I've actually got a lot of nice memories about that film. I am. Um, I remember. I one thing I was struggling. I was tasked with creating the, you know, the main ancestor that was voiced by George Takei. He has to come up. You know, he has to materialize somehow, and uh, they wanted it to feel magical. And I really had no idea what to do. And I sat there and sat there and sat there and and uh, struggled with it for a while. Until I just started, I just dove in. I just said, okay, I'm just going to start drawing and just move straight ahead. And in doing that, I created what you ended up in the film, where he comes alive in this kind of the swirly kind of apparition. 
and it was cool. the The head of the the head of the studio at the time called me up and you know said, "Hey, great job!" And it was it was nice to 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 get the accolades that I got. Do you consider yourself a master of pen and ink? No. Not even close. But, I like to try. That's what I'm struggling with today. Do you have any advice on drawing completely black animals? I have a beautiful black rescue dog, but I'm struggling to depict his form due to his color. Well, he's not completely black. You wouldn't be able to see him if he was completely black. So there's still value changes within that black coat. That's what you need to look for. Look for those black cha those those value changes within that dark coat. And I'll guarantee you you'll start to see the form come out of that. But if I have some one person asks, uh, you consider yourself a master of pen and ink, but then someone else entirely the Master Aaron, <laughs> I'm a great admirer of your work. Greetings from Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Calling you Master Aaron. Uh -huh. Do your white pens block up? I uh, brought the 0 0.8, or I bought the 0 0.8, and mine seems to, uh, mine seems to fit. Uh, 0 0.8 does not block up as near, nearly as much as 0 0.5. Uh, I don't really have any problems with them blocking up. Now you can get a 1. 1 is bigger than the 8. And, uh, and they're really good. They don't block up at all. I've actually find that the they put out too much ink, a too much, a too much. It's just a too much. So I just want to remind you of the Labor Day weekend sale. It's the Labor Day weekend sale. Buy either my character design or my acting for animation course and get the other one for just 15 bucks more. Uh, and both are on sale at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Labor Day weekend. The old Jimmy Buffett song. I got my hush puppies on. I guess I never was meant for glitter rock and roll. As Halloween is approaching, uh, any plans to do a monster course? Yes. I, well, well, we're not going to do it. See you take on the classic zombies and werewolves. No, I don't like zombies. But we're. Uh, I'll do werewolves. Zombies are. I. You know, I don't understand the appeal of zombies. How is it? First of all, stop writing zombie scripts and stop making zombie movies. They've all been made. <laughs> They've all been made. It's the worst genre ever. I just hate zombies. Not because I'm scared of them. I just think it's dumb. Oh, so, so the ones that. The ones that I like are based off of real, realistic infections. Like Last of Us is my is my favorite. Walking Dead is just a fun drama. Just it's typical violence, but I love Last of Us because the disease is believable because it's based off of a real. So is Ebola, sense. but I don't want to watch someone melting because of Ebola. No. 
but you get what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, I just that's just not my kind of my my but kind of scares. If I so want to have I want zombies, some good like, sci-fi or good ghost stories. So besides zombies, we'll take zombies out. But would you consider doing a, a monster course with like werewolves, vampires? I don't think I'll do a course on it. I don't know that there's a course in there, but um, definitely we're going to do monster themed imagery for the for the Halloween of, live uh, live streams. Yeah, just the whole month of October will just be different monsters each each Friday. Well, not, not no, I'm going to do that. I want because it, it's also Inktober. So I got to save some. I got to save some fun stuff in there. And it's really coming down out there. Uh, Nick says Mulan was also where you met Byron Howard, right? No. I knew Byron. Byron was in the studio for quite a while long uh, before. He was in cleanup and everything before he was on Mulan. Um, I, knew him, I knew him for a few years before Mulan. And, uh, speaking of Mulan... Uh, he became my assistant on Mulan, but I really didn't have anything to teach him at that point because he, he was already a genius. Go ahead, Dustin. Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> I, meant, I didn't mean to cut you off earlier. Uh, the, speaking of Mulan, the scene where the ghost, uh, the head, the head ancestor, rised up. Uh, what was your reference for its movement? It looked like smoke or water to me. I, there was no reference. I just did it out of my head. That's why I was saying I was sitting there not knowing what I was going to do, and I just sat there and I just did it. I just decided, okay, I'm just going to do what feels right, and I just animated straight ahead. Yeah, I gotta say, my whole favorite part of that sequence is the very last bit where he waves his arm up it to reveal his staff. His staff? Just, yeah, he just... <laughs> yeah, that, by the time I got to that point, I realized he could just do anything. Yeah. And so I just had so, him do it. Yeah, he was just staff? so smooth and easy Oh, thanks. That. Yeah, it's just like, okay, he wants us, we want a staff, let's just... Have it appear out of thin air. It was fun. Did I miss the part where he listed his art supplies uh, he's using today? Yep. Unfortunately, yes. That is correct. I've got a Strathmore toned gray pad, toned paper. Nine by twelve inches. I've got India ink, art and fly pens that I'm drawing in with. I've got Copic markers. I've got Bimoji pens. Got a whole bunch of stuff. Got a bunch of stuff here. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Have you been to the Naples Zoo? I went last weekend, and it's a beautiful, small, and most importantly, not crowded zoo. Perfect for another Florida animal workshop. Just saying. Well, I grew Jeez. up. I grew up in Naples uh, through the seventies. I uh, moved to. I moved to Naples uh, when I was a kid in nineteen seventy six. And uh, the Naples Zoo, I believe, used to be Jungle Gardens. And so I used to go there when it was Jungle Gardens. They had they had all kinds of tiglons and ligers and all kinds of crazy animal hybrids. It wasn't the best place in the world, but uh, you know it was the '70s and it was a little lax and rules and all of that. But um, I used to go, and it was cool because I would, you know, even, even as an eight, nine year old, I'd go in there and draw. Will you follow the Inktober prompt list? No, I don't like following the prompt list. I like just doing my own stuff. I watched 
one of your old YouTube videos yesterday where you did a paper animation of a big cat turning its head. I found it so interesting. Do you think you'll ever do a stream like that again? Yes. Matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a lot of streams like that. There probably won't be too many on paper. I'll, I'll do a few on paper. But um, one of our big goals moving forward after I get done with the Birds of Prey course is to get back on to Snow Bear. And so while we're making Snow Bear, we're going to be live streaming a lot or doing videos just showing the process. Actually, one of our goals uh, in making Snow Bear is to also create an entire course. We're going to record the entire process of making the short. And as we come out of it, we're going to create an entire course on how to create from scratch an animated short. I have a question. Have you I have a dream. I dreamed a dream of Tanga. Um, have you ever done hyperrealism painting or Trump Lowell? Trump Loy. What? Trump Loy. Trump Loy? Trump Loy. It's French from Fool the Eye. Uh, yes. It's not something I really enjoy. I don't like getting super, super tight like that. Yes, yes, yes. Don't forget to wake up Billy Joe Armstrong when September ends. What's that? Mar Mar just, uh, somebody named Martin wrote, uh, don't forget to wake up Billy Joe Armstrong when September ends. Oh, uh huh. You know, it's his song, right? Yeah. Took me a minute, but. How's your weight loss journey going? Good. I've, I've, I've stalled out a little bit, um, but it's going well. 22 pounds so far. But I've been stuck in the 147 range for the last three weeks. Nick says we should get Tony to sculpt a werewolf and superhero for his traditional course. Yes, we should. Uh, he wants to do figurative though, which I think would be I think that would be better. But we could do like a supplemental. We could do a thing for for Halloween uh, and go interview him again in his studio and just talk about all of his universal monsters. If he's not gone by then. Do you prefer toned paper over straight white paper? Yes. I find I can get more, much more depth with paper that has a dark tone to it. If you could combine two animal species to create a new creature, which ones would you put together? Me and an eagle. What? Me and an eagle. You and an eagle? Yep. Because <laughs> I want to fly, baby. I would probably say me and a bear so I can nap through the winter. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think, uh, I'm thinking either a lion I'm and thinking. a cheetah. 
or a bear and an eagle. Oh can you, yeah. Can you imagine an e a bear that can fly like an eagle? Or how about a dog? Because then it could be I fly like a beagle. <laughs> fly like a beagle. I want to fly like a beagle to, to the, the sea. sea. Fly oh, like oh, a beagle. Oh, Let my doghouse oh, carry me. Oh. Woof. Ooh, that's a good combo. Somebody, somebody uh, says a lion and a wolf. Yes, yes, yes. A lion and a wolf, yes. Is that why Kenai's brother was an eagle? I, I don't know. Well, that was his spirit. <laughs> the beagle has landed. That thunder. Boy, that thunder's coming in there good, baby. That's so we don't get a power surge. That would be a doozy. That'd be a bummer. That would be a little bit of a bummer right there, I tell you. Alright. That was thunder in the background. Lightning in the thunder. Thunder, thunder. <laughs> thunder, thunder, thunder. Is I'm going to do an owl and a bear so I can finally have an owl bear cub. Oh, that actually sounds rather cute. <laughs> owl and a bear. So here I'm trying to get the right value changes in here. feathers are folding over each other and they're coming straight at the viewer. So I'm really just drawing these negative shapes of the shadows that the feathers are making under one another. Some good lightning right there. What does glazing in watercolor mean? Glazing is just doing a series of very thin washes and building up your tone through a series of very thin washes. You're glazing it. You're putting just a light color, and then you build up another light color, and then another, and, oh, and slowly it builds up a richer tone. We are getting really pounded. I'm sure you can hear the rain coming down. It's coming down like a memory. Here comes the rain again. Nope, that would be the sun. Here comes the rain, I say. It's so sad. (laughs) 
All right, so let's start working our way back. I'll zoom in on this a little bit so you can see more of the details. It's it's a little bit of a struggle today. I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, um, the sepia pens are not the right tone and they're not the right uh, value for me. They, they go on a little weird. But, hey, we'll just, we're going to roll with it. i got to pay better attention to my feathers in here as well. <laughs> the good thing, the rain is so loud that we can't hear the static noise. Way better now. <laughs> That's a good plus. You gotta love those Florida rains. There we go. Uh, draw a chicken hawk. Looney Tunes reference. What is a chicken hawk? I'm a chicken hawk and you're a chicken. So you're gonna come with me and make me or am I gonna have to mush you up? Is that what, is that the actual line? Yeah. You're gonna come with me quietly or am I gonna have to mush you all up? <laughs> He's just a little guy. It's Foghorn Leghorn. I'm a chicken hawk and you're a chicken. Does this Louie Jones know what this calls for? Duck season. <laughs> Rabbit season. Duck season. Rabbit season. Rabbit season. Duck season. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> Getting these darks in are really pulling it together. That's helping quite a bit. I'm going to slowly work my way to the dark side. Oh, so I, um, if any of you get HBO Max, started watching this. Sci First of all, my favorite genre is sci-fi. I love good sci-fi. That's my absolute favorite genre. And um, there's a new show out. Ridley Scott directed the first two episodes. He's he's uh, executive producing it. I'm not sure if he wrote it or what the deal is. But there's um, there's a new series that's out. The first three episodes are out called Raised by Wolves, and it is so unique and so engaging and so cool. Some of the best sci-fi I've seen in years. So if you're a sci-fi fan like me, check out Raised by Wolves. It's amazing. Is that on um, Hulu? H HBO Max. HBO Max. Yeah, my all-time favorite sci-fi series is my outro, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you're gonna. This but is live action. This is what, you're gonna love this stuff. Live action-wise, my all-time favorite live action is Firefly. Oh yeah. Well, this is totally. Right that, this is totally life. way different than that. Yeah, I've seen the commercials for. Uh, Raised by Wolves. And yeah, the look of it, it, it looks a lot like, it's got a lot of kind of Prometheus in it. Uh, more like... Um, in its look, and it's... In, in it Prometheus in a way. with a little bit of maybe a, Oblivion, maybe? Yeah. With yeah. Cruise. Yeah. But it's really kind of, they, they, uh, they desaturated it like 40%, uh, something like that. Yeah, the whole... Or 60%. And the whole concept of all the kids being raised by by machine is very similar to that of um, what was that uh, movie that came out what was it last year where this girl is raised by by a robot oh, and a yeah. walker yeah 
but the concept, just the the what the way they do things is super cool. It's super original. Oh yeah, the new um, the new Dune is coming out. Yes, I never read any of the Dune books. I've seen the uh, I remember seeing the the original Dune. Oh, I never liked the yeah the movie that came out in '84. Yeah, had Sting in it. Yeah, I saw that in the theater at the Coastland Mall. Yeah, I saw my buddy buddy's house years ago while we were all uh, clean, cleaning out and uh, prepping our uh, paintball guns for the next day. Dustin, will you be watching the Snyder Cut of Justin Lee? Justice League when it releases on HBO Max. I don't know. <laughs> kind of a hit or miss for me on that. Mostly a miss. And I really caught on too well the uh, of the DC universe as well as it did on the Marvel universe. Yeah, it's definitely darker. But it's not even that it's darker, because I don't mind darker. They're just, they're badly paced. And plus, there's already been so many Batman. Like, they can't stick to one actor. Yeah. I think that's the tradition now. Like, like Batman is DC's Spider-Man. Because <laughs> Spider-Man has gone through the same, the same thing. Uh... Sorry, I'm, j I'm jumping yeah, back over. Before. Nick asks, do you think the, the sepia tone would have been more like you would have expected on white paper? Actually, no. Um, I was hoping the sepia tone wouldn't be as dark as it is. As well. I was looking, I was hoping it would be more of a, just a slight half tone, but in sepia, I guess is the best way to say it. I wanted something that was a little softer. Aaron, does it bother you to be drawing in the shadow your hand is casting? That would drive me crazy. No, I don't even see the shadow anymore. Get out. <laughs> I love that gesture is so that gesture is so simple yet so perfect the way he uh Cary Grant was saying, Get out. Get out. Oh like, yeah. There's no way I can do it as well as he did. Yeah. Yeah, there are just some movements that is really hard to replicate. Like, do you ever see the people that can create a perfect circle with one swing of their arm? Yes. Like, how? <laughs> Practice. Practice. Aaron and Dustin, have you watched Cobra Kai? It's so good. Yes. <laughs> I, I have not watched Cobra Kai. Well, you got to remember, I, I'm i the I'm the generation of, the first of, the, of those guys. Yeah, so I'm the same age as, as those guys in the movie are in the show and I remember the movie so vividly but what's funny about the show is that it's super cheesy just like the movie it's and the score is super cheesy so they it's almost like they know what oh, they're yeah. for so they're just like yeah we're just gonna just gonna do it the old fashioned way yeah it's super formula and it's but it's 80's formula and they and they do it perfectly and I just find it so funny that 80s are so fascinating to everyone. Back in my day, it was the 50s that we were all into, you know? Oh, when yeah. I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, we were fascinated by the 50s. And now I see everyone being fascinated by the 80s, and it's just, it cracks me up. Yeah, there's a movie that I came across that I have not watched yet, but I'm very curious about it. Uh, I'm thinking of rent renting at some point is uh, Xanadu. It was 1980. Xanadu? Xanadu. Yeah, that's with uh, Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah some, it's uh, super cheesy. Yeah, somebody posted uh, images of an animated sequence. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? And so I looked up Xanadu on on YouTube, and I just saw a little clip, so I'm like, this looks like Is, is John Travolta <laughs> in that one, too, or no? I can't remember. Is who? I can't remember John Travolta's in it as well. No, but Gene Kelly is. Oh, that's right. And that's why I'm like, okay, now i got to watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, anything Gene Kelly in it, i got to watch it.
It was all during the time of Greece and and uh, flash dance it's, and. It is nineteen eighty, so it's like that transitional mix between that between the nineteen late seventies and early eighties attire. Yeah, exactly. I can get some more subtle, some subtler, 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 subtler. Where'd my white pencil? My my, my what pencil? This is French gray. Well, I can go even more subtle. Mixed media. That's where it's at, man. Mixed You know, the media that's mixed. The media that's mixed. Oh, bye. So what I'm trying to do here is, this is called the lore area, the area between the beak and the, and the eye. And on, on a harpy, it's very rough. So I'm trying to get lots of texture in here. I love the highlights and values again with the toned paper. Yeah, it's pretty doggone cool what you can get with toned paper. I really love it. And to uh, to the people that, that just hopped in, uh, this is a Strathmore, correct? Strathmore yes. paper? Yep. There we go, stop shaking. Yeah, that's the problem with that with that arm support is that every once in a while either it keeps wobbling until you hold it down to, to stop it. Yeah. Or sometimes if you have the stabilization active, it starts going crazy and, and just vibrates to the point where it looks like it's just low resolution. Yeah. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. But so I'm just going to kind of lay in some highlights. Some highlights. Highlights? Yes. Yes, yes. Actually, here's white charcoal. I wonder if this is any good. Nope. Doesn't go good over the wax. And Nick just shared uh, the link to the Strath Strathmore uh, books. Is that a new question up there, or is that an old question? That's an old one. Are you going to sell this one when you're done making it? I hadn't even thought about it. To be honest with you. Why, you want to you buy really a kid? You really should sell, sell prints that you make on the live streams. You really should stop telling me what to do. I'm your father. I really should. So I'm just laying in a few more details. Where did my pencil sharpener go? That's I'm, I'm really annoyed by that. My pencil sharpener is completely miscapeared. Miscapeared? I don't know what to shave on that. Maybe without the hazard? Maybe. It's totally disappeared. You got my pencil sharpener? Well, that's okay. It's okay. It's fine. I'll figure it out somehow. There we go. So he says, if you sell the prints, you can take my money. believe how much it's raining. Oh yeah, it's, it's raining, it's pouring. The old man is snoring. Yeah. 
How'd you know? Bumped his head and went to bed. Nick is saying, if only someone had suggested we don't mount the camera to the desk, but instead to the wall. Yeah, well, smart guy, the thing in front of me is a window, not the wall. But we can hit, mount it from, from the ceiling, for sure. Hey, look, surprise, there's an image. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Got a little kitty running around at my feet. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, it's a cat. <laughs> hey, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I also have the, the set camera on, too, in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, this little guy, like our little cat here, was born out in the woods next to our house. We lured him, Vedanta had spent three days luring him in. And then he, she trapped him, got him in the house, got him fed. And he's completely calmed down now. And he's just like the coolest little cat. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He'll bite you. That's the one thing he doesn't. He doesn't know his own. Uh, he doesn't know how hard he bites. Ah, still learning. Yeah. There we go. Let me pull out wide on that. Do you have any updates on the CAT Foundation scholarship? Yes. Uh, I talked about it earlier in the uh, when we first started. We, uh, Nick and I, over the next week or two, are going to be looking at uh, portfolio submissions. We had over 180 portfolio submissions, and we're going to be going through them and announce the, our first winner in the next two weeks. What's the cat's name? Freddie, as in Freddie Mercury. What's going on, eh? I got a pit pen like you suggested. Any tips uh, for techniques with this pen or things we should know? You know, I I use the cross hatching like you just like you see me doing. Um, they run out fast. That's my only my only uh, complaint about them is they run out fast. So uh, you know, use them sparingly. Just going a little bit loose here, loosey goosey. I think that's a that'll be about it. This is just meant to be a sketch anyway. I wanted to try out these uh, 
these pens and I think they're okay I don't know that I would use them again I don't think I would mix them with my cool grays again this brown and the brown and the uh, Uh, the brown and the cool are okay. It's just a, it's got a weird combination. But uh, but that's that's our image for today. Let me gonna go ahead and let me give it to go ahead and sign it. Right, that's is a harpy eagle. I'll pull out on it a little bit there. There we go. Here's our harpy eagle based on this sketch that Dustin shot. Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Actually, as I did that, I could see something. Oh, look at that, I'm doing one more thing. Aha, one more thing. It allows me to kind of smooth out some of these highlight areas that I want. A little bit. There we go. Just a touch. Are you going to finish the lower body? Nope. Just going to leave it. Just going to let it kind of fade off. The all the the attention was all on the head. Just gonna leave it like that. Just a sketch. It's like a little study. So there we go. There's our little guy, or our big guy. This is a giant eagle. Just like that. All right. Well, uh, that's all I got. That's all you got. Uh, YouTube comment looks beautiful to me, dude, but I know you have to be happy with your tools. <laughs> True. I do. I do. Actually, I want to hit one more thing. I just saw that it could be a little better. Another one more thing? Yep. What's neat about this pit pen when it gets worn out like this? That you get these nice soft kind of effects. Because then I can go back in with my jelly roll. redefine some areas so once again I want to remind you guys we got our Labor Day weekend sale going on at creatureartteacher.com so buy either my character design or my acting for animation course and you can get the other one for just $15 once again that's creatureartteacher.com and also my uh, my digital painting and Photoshop course is one dollar right now but it's only going to be a dollar for this weekend for the rest of the weekend so if you're interested in uh, taking my course on digital painting and Photoshop I highly recommend you go and grab it for a buck less than a pack of gum or at least I think that's less than a pack of gum nowadays There. Now, see, look, I can't stop now. Can't stop. Believing. Can't stop. Believing. Uh, don't stop. No, I'm believing. saying can't stop. Hold on to that feeling. <laughs> nice. Nice. There's a scene in uh, Cobra Kai where they're driving down the road together and they're in his car. 
Yeah. And Ario Speedwagon comes on and he goes, You Speedwagon fan? What man isn't? <laughs> I was just like, Me, me. I'm not a Speedwagon fan, never was. What man isn't? You're probably thinking. I like oh, the, God. in the, the uh, uh, Oh, what was it? What was the show? Which what was the show that that uh, Alec Baldwin in, was in in uh, Thirty Rock? In Thirty, 30 Rock? Rock, yeah. Because uh, Nick pointed this one out to me. He asked if uh, if he liked Phil Collins, and he goes, "I have two ears and a heart, don't I?" <laughs> Do you like Phil Collins? I have two ears and a heart, don't I? All right, we got to go, man. I'm just making small talk at this point and noodling. I'm noodling my little drawing. Noodle, noodle, noodle. noodle. So there is Harpy done in ink. Uh, that was fun. So uh, remember my Labor Day weekend sale by either my character design or my acting for animation course and get the other one for just $15 at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Plus get 10% off any order with the code LABORDAY2020. All right, so head on over. We've got some good deals going on over there. So you're going to get stuff off of stuff that's already drastically dropped. Plus, uh, my introduction to animation course is still free. That's not going to last forever. So if you haven't gotten that yet and you're interested in animation or at least starting out animation, then go check it out. Other than that, I think we're done. So I will see you guys next week, next Friday. Um, and we're also, by next Friday, we will have our uh, How to Draw Birds of Prey, my biggest course ever, I think. Uh, How to Draw Birds of Prey, ready for pre-order by then. So uh, be ready. Uh, anyway, I will see you next Friday. We'll be doing a live stream for Lightbox that you guys can join us on. And I, uh, that's all I got. So go out, put some beauty back into the world. You're an artist. That's what we need to do. And uh, be nice to somebody. Wear your mask. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if you guys are interested in any wildlife photography for any new guys here, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze, where I have a whole bunch of wildlife photos that I have taken out there. And also on CreatureArtTeacher.com, I have my own uh, photo reference bundles of Florida wildlife from... Uh, North American otters to uh, alligators to different sorts of birds, including sand hill cranes, which are one of my favorite birds out there here in Florida. So once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.